Like many of the nuggets that preceded this one, this nugget on tracking progress is going to reintroduce the artifacts that we've touched on already earlier in the series. We're going to talk about the burn down chart, the burn up chart, the product backlog, specifically as how we use them for tracking progress and provide more detail on the creation of and the usage of these known artifacts. And I'm also going to introduce a couple new principles for discussing for tracking progress in your scrum and that's a sprint done chart and reintroduce a concept I touched on for product versus done board. Tracking progress is critical in scrum. Our sprints are short. My scenario is two weeks long. And we have an absolute promise to our product owner to complete specific stories in those two weeks. So we absolutely need to have diligence in tracking progress. We've introduced the concept that we do a lot of that diligence and tracking progress in our daily scrum. And we do that through any of or all of the above. The burn down charts, the burn up charts, the duns or whatever. A lot of Scrum people call these information radiators. The concept is if we make these information radiators visible, if we put them out there so that the team, the product owner, the Scrum master, the business owner, anyone else in the organization who cares, they can see progress and they can know how we're doing. Hence the term information radiators. I prefer to think of these as big, with the emphasis on big, as our discussion already in the artifacts, visible, hand-drawn charts. And whether we call them big, visible, hand-drawn charts, or whether we use the more appropriate term for Scrum information radiators. They all have the same purpose, showing, tracking, proving progress in our Scrum and in our sprints. And the first of these artifacts that I'm going to reintroduce is the release burn down, or as I over, have over here in the side, the release burn up chart. Of all of the progress tracking charts that we're going to discuss in this nugget, I would at least suggest the release burn down is the least truly valuable, but is also easy enough to maintain that I would still recommend you maintain it and use it on your walls in your team workspace. And the release burn down chart, the reason it's the least valuable, it is the least precise. And it's the least precise because we only have an estimate of the number of stories outstanding for the release. So when we did our release plan, we said our release plan is three months out, or three to four months out, and generically I would like to have customer maintenance completed in the release. And therefore, if I go to my product backlog and I look at all of the stories that I think are related to customer maintenance, I come up with a number and I believe at the beginning of the release, I have 30-ish and I will stick with my ish stories that I believe are going to be needed as part of the release. And with a three month release, I have an estimate of how many sprints are going to be in the release and that's simply you know, the number of months I think the release is going to be and two weeks per sprint, et cetera, et cetera. And again, this is an estimate. We won't know for sure that it's 10 versus 12 versus 14 sprints in the release until we truly have accomplished everything that the product owner expects in the release. So these are guesses. and guesses, which is why I say it's the least value of all of the progress tracking charts, but it's still, 
is relatively easy to maintain and certainly still gives a lot of visibility into how we're doing to accomplish the release. And then the maintenance of it is pretty straightforward. At the end of release one, we have completed, you know, four stories. So therefore, we have 26 stories left to be done and so on until we burn our way down. And again, a good visual, visual representation of how we're doing against the release. And as already discussed, for those of you who prefer to have the upward trending progress charts as opposed to the downward trending, we can certainly turn that into a release burn up chart. And we start at zero through the number of estimated releases and with an expectation that we're going to be going to 30 and so on. So pick your poison. Don't expect to get a lot of value because it is the least precise. We have a large number of guesses involved in our release, burn up, burn down charts, but still a very practical chart to have posted out in your team workspace so that the team, the product owner, the business owner has a vision for how we're doing. Our next information radiator progress chart is the standard burn down or burn up charts for the sprint. And these, I would say, are mandatory. One of, you don't need both. Pick the one that you prefer, the burn down versus the burn up, downward trending versus upward trending. And I would say, pick the one and make it mandatory. Because this is the true information radiator that's going to show your actual progress. And there's no imprecision in these. We've completed our sprint plan, and we absolutely know that there are eight stories to be completed in this sprint. And we absolutely know that there are 10 days in the sprint. So all the imprecision is gone, and we have the ability to walk our way through the stories. If you draw it in the stair-step fashion as I've done, or if you use a more traditional standard slope, and let's get the extra details out of there just to make it a little more straightforward. Pick, pick the way of drawing the graph that again works for your approach. I kind of personally like the stair step approach because I see far too many standard sloping graphs, but that, that's just a personal statement. And you can again begin to see that on day five, here we are, and do we look like we're in shape? Are we going to be able to complete the sprint on schedule or not on schedule and so on? Just again, that visual indicator for how we're doing. Now, what we track on our burn down, burn up charts is going to again be based on the style of work, your expectations, the team's expectations, and the product owner's expectations. The most simplistic form of burn down chart is, as I have described, simply the number of stories to be completed and adds absolute simplicity and I believe there's absolute value in simplicity with tracking our progress. The problem with tracking the stories is it's not very granular. And although I have shown some direct progress, as a matter of fact, I've shown almost linear progress, if we were truly tracking the number of stories, it probably would have zero stories completed until probably about day three or day four of our sprint and probably would have a steeper slope and probably have more undulations and variations in it. But if we go more granular, our burn down chart can become far more relevant. So what do we need, mean by more granular? Instead of tracking the number of stories, let's track the number of story points. So now instead of being from one to eight, we're probably tracking from one to, let's say 40. And we're still going from day one to day 10 in our sprint, but we would absolutely expect that on day one, we have completed a story point or two. So at day one, we're down to 36, and at day two, we're down to 29. So we're beginning to see more direct value. And the other aspect we can get from tracking something like story points is we can begin to see that we have 
true, better information as we work through our plan. So as part of our daily scrum on day four, we reviewed the work related with story number 16 and we said this story is going to be a little more complex and therefore instead of being four story points it's now eight story points in length. So the good news of using something more granular such as story points it's more relevant and it shows true work in the sprint. And recognizing that we had the spike, we are very quickly able to determine a potential issue. All of a sudden on day four we discovered that we have four more story points to be done. That tells us all things being equal there is a strong probability we're not going to get all of the stories completed in this sprint because we have four story points more work to do and that could be the the key to go into one of our internal sprint replans. All things being equal we have four more story points to be done let's have a quick look at the remaining stories. Do we still think the story point estimates for the remaining stories is accurate? In which case on day four it's probably time to go to the product owner and say be prepared we're not telling you yet be, be, be prepared to remove a story. By about day seven we'll have absolute confidence whether we need to remove a story or not or maybe as part of that sprint replan we determine that story 32 probably isn't a 4 it's a 3 and story 44 is probably not a 3 it's a 1 so now we're down to only a single story point delta and maybe we have enough confidence that you know with the standard ebb and flow of work in the sprint we can adjust for accommodate i.e. absorb maybe that one story point flow but again it's given us far better information to, to plan and manage our sprint by using something more granular than stories down to story points. And you may want to take this even farther down to the concept of managing against task points. So remembering back to our product backlog where we said we broke it down into analysis for Fred and design for Mary and testing for Sally. Testing and this had three task points and this had two task points and this had four task points so again if we start managing our information radiators our tracking of progress down to the task point and therefore this number is probably not going to be 40 story points it's going to be 120 task points again far more granularity that we have to manage the results of our sprint. And I simply moved on to the burn up chart to continue the discussion recognizing that some people prefer to use the burn up with the upward trending graph for progress versus the traditional down trending for the burn down. But I continued on only because my last slide was getting a little busy and I want to discuss the differences between managing the number of stories, the number of story points, and the number of task points. Obviously, the more detailed, the more precision, and the better the management. And I will say absolutely yes to all of the above. I'm going to get more detail, more precision, better management if I'm tracking 120 task points versus 40 story points versus 8 stories. But and this is the huge but. How much precision is too much precision? And the answer to that question is going to depend on your own individual needs, your own personality, and your product owner's personality. 
I tend, and this is just Steve, I tend to prefer to do my management at the story point level because the story points are something I automatically have as a result of my estimating and my sprint backlog planning. So story points I have automatically. I may or may not have task points. So therefore in Scrum, we want to do just enough work and only the work required to get the job done. And if asking the team to go away and breaking down 40 story points into the individual task points is extra work that I'm adding in only, and I will stress only for the viewpoint of creating a more detailed burn up chart, I would suggest going to the task point level is inappropriate because we're not doing just enough work, we're adding management. And if there's one thing that is not Scrum, it's adding in management overhead. So if you don't automatically have task points as part of your standard operating principles within your Scrum, within your sprint, I would suggest going to the task point level is a degree of precision, a degree of extra, I'm going to use the word value add, but I'm not sure value add is the right term, a degree of extra add of work that may or may not be consistent with being effectively Scrum. But I think you always have the, the, the story points as part of your estimating process. So I would tend to always go with the story point as opposed to the stories. Now, there is one issue with that. If we're expecting to get visitors by the product owner, by the business owner, by others, SMEs, and other interested parties, and they come into my team workspace and they look at the burn up chart and they say, you have 40 story points and here you are at this point in your project. What does that mean? What's a story point? I don't understand story points. I thought you were only doing eight stories in this particular sprint. So what, what, what? All kinds of questions begin to come out from the other interested parties. So depending on the true value, the true expectations, the true users of the burn up chart, often using the number of stories has far more meaning for these other interested parties than a story point. So to me, a story burn up has value for the other interested parties. A story point burn up has value for the product owner, the scrum master, and we should only be an interested party because we are not doing direct management and absolutely for the team. So you could choose to do two burn up charts. You could choose to do a number of stories completed, burn up chart for the other interested parties, and a story point burn up for the team. And I don't think that's a bad idea. It should take five minutes a day to complete the burn up charts at the end of your scrum. So at the end of the today's scrum, how many stories do we got done? And directly relate that to, to story points from the original estimate. And Fred, you're still working on story point number 93. How are you doing? Oh, you think you've got three of the five story points worth of work done? Perfect, thank you. So as long as you can get the information for the story point burn up easily from your team, tremendous value. But again, if you're layering in management to give your story point burn up, again, you may not be the most scrum light project going on. Personal recommendations, personal evaluations, Pick the methods that's going to work for the burn up chart to suit your needs. And now I want to introduce one of the new progress tracking charts that I personally find very, very valuable in my work. And I just simply call it the done chart. And this is based on the what is done. 
So you may choose to use the what is done chart, but being a brief person of few words, which you may not believe after you listen to all my nuggets, but being a person of few words, I like to simply call this my done chart. And what is a done chart? It tracks the tick boxes for each story when ticked. So I have my story with my standard definition of done. And if you remember, I suggested we have our story card on the front with all of the text, I as a definition of done, et cetera, et cetera. And I suggest we flip it over and on the back, we have all of our tick boxes. And ideally we have the little headings that says peer review of analysis peer review of design, peer review of test cases, et cetera, et cetera, and peer or business ex validation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we have all of our little tick boxes on the, the back of each card, and we have an expectation that we have 10 tick boxes for done on each story. So therefore, in my done chart, I'm simply tracking the number of tick boxes. So at the end of day one in my sprint, I have, unfortunately, only a single tick box completed. But by the end of day two, I'm up to four tick boxes. By the end of day three, I'm up to seven tick boxes, and so on as I move up my way through. And I will typically put my, my boundary, this is my expectation, of the number of duns in my sprint. And therefore, again, I'm able to track. We would expect to see some ebb and flow. We will have absolute spikes near the end where all of the final tick boxes are being done. And we will see some variations of. But there is an absolute expectation that I have eight stories. I have you know, 10 tick boxes. Therefore, in fact, my expectation is not as low as 25 for this particular sprint. My expectation is I would have 80 tick boxes done. Why do I like the done as opposed to the other burn up charts? Well, in fact, I use my done in addition to And actually what I do is I use my burn up as number of stories and I use my done together to give me my progress tracking that I need. Steve's approach, burn up number of stories. This is the information the other interested parties care about. So they're not worrying about story points. They're not worrying about task points. This is absolute visible information that everybody can relate to. Steve expects to, or the team expects to, is probably a better word, complete eight stories in this sprint. And we absolutely see their progress. But the done gives me the granularity that the team needs to track its progress. And there is no making it up. There's no going to Fred saying, you're working on a five story point story. Fred, how are you doing? How many of those stories do you think you have done? Oh, you think you got three of the five story? There's still a degree of expectation for progress status tracking using that method. And that's a degree of overhead and degree of management I don't believe is very scrum-like. But I'm automatically tracking all of these tick boxes on the back of my story card as I walk through my done. So why not take advantage of that and have a done chart? And I want to introduce the concept that the sprint backlog is the simplest, most basic of all progress tracking. Our sprint backlog is going to be posted in a very visible area. We start off our sprint with everything here. And we watch it progress through the in progress through to the done. 
And as we visually look at our sprint backlog and see how the work is progressing from to do to in progress to done, we absolutely have progress tracking. So don't forget the value of the sprint backlog in and of itself as probably the most fundamental of all your progress tracking. Don't rely exclusively on your burn ups, your burn downs, your duns, and all of these other information radiators that it's out there. Focus people on the source of all progress, the sprint backlog, and treat it as a absolutely powerful management tool in your sprint. And just to comment to you on your sprint backlog or any of the other charts, tools that you're going to be posting in your team workspace, we need to make sure that these are visible. Visible, visible, visible is the key message I've been delivering throughout. And sometimes you don't have the ability to find the right cork boards. So we need to find a way to make these work without cork boards. A lot of people will use whiteboards and yellow stickies. I don't find that the, the whiteboards are probably the most effective place to be sticking my yellow stickies. A, yellow stickies I don't find work very well on whiteboards and therefore tend to fall off. I prefer not to use the whiteboard but use the walls in my team workspace. And a word of caution when you're using the walls. You still need to have all of these lines and obviously management and building facilities are going to get very upset if you take a permanent marker and start marking on, on the walls. So we use painter's tape. And I want to stress, and this is not a, this is not a, a nugget on, on how to put stuff on walls and not cause damage, but experience shows if you use the painter's tape, the blue or the green painter's tape, and it comes in various widths, you can absolutely create your sprint backlog on the walls in your building and have no harm because these do not tear off paint. We can leave the painter's tape on the walls for a day, a month, or two years, and the painter's tape, the blue or the green, will absolutely come off without tearing paint off. That's what they're meant to be done. So let's look for creative ways that we can get effective information radiators, sprint backlogs, whether we have cork boards or whether we simply use painter tape on the walls and make sure we have that progress tracking visible in our organization. And speaking of simple progress tracking, I want to reintroduce a concept that I touched on very, very early in our artifact discussion of having a done board. And done board for this viewpoint is different than my done charts. My done chart is focusing on the tick boxes per sprint. My done board is stories completed. So much like the product or sorry release burn down burn up charts the backlog versus the done boards are at the project slash release level and simply put we have our product backlog which is going to start off as very busy lots of stories and as we move through each sprint plan, a few stories are going to disappear and move to the sprint backlog. And at the end of each sprint, in our sprint review, the stories in the complete are going to move off of that. And I suggest they need to move to the done board. Some scrum projects will simply take the stories off of the sprint backlog have a party, celebrate ripping them up. In warm climate, they may take them outside and put them on the barbecue and burn them. 
to have the little celebration to, to celebrate the completion of stories, taking them off of the product backlog. And yes, I think there is some value with these little party celebrations, but I also think there's tremendous value in keeping the stories or maybe taking a copy of the stories or a photocopy of the stories and moving them on to this done board, which is just another cork board or area of my team workspace walls that's marked off with painter's tape. And I can begin to see the done board get very busy and getting more and more and more stories as my product backlog is getting less and less and less stories. Again, just a very, very powerful visual indicator to help us track the progress. This nugget was focused on tracking progress. Visual indicators of progress. We reintroduced a number of artifacts already discussed, the burn down, the burn up charts, to visually graph and show our results on the project. Burn down takes from a given point and tracks down to zero, which is obviously a very powerful motivator. Or for those who are more traditional graphing focused, we'll track upwards to show progress. Pick the method, pick the degree of detail. Are you going to track stories, story points, or task points? Pick the method that's going to work best for your particular team working on the Scrum. We introduced a new concept for tracking progress, which is tracking the definition of done. All the little tick boxes on each story and tracking the work through those for completion. Steve finds the sprint and done chart to be a very powerful, simple, and easy method. And at the end of this nugget, I reintroduce you to using the existing methods that we already have in place. The sprint backlog is a visual show of, of progress. And I encourage you to consider having a done board to show all the stories completed. And the key is the product backlog gets smaller and the done board gets bigger as we work through our sprints, through our releases to complete the product. This concludes our nugget on tracking progress. I hope this module has been informative for you and thank you very much for viewing.